Hello and welcome to this video in which we will show how to do a paired t-test. The idea behind a paired t-test is that I have two populations. So I might represent it by population 1 and population 2. And inside these populations I have things that I'm going to look at and these things that I'm going to look at are typically connected. The application that we'll use for this video is the idea that I am measuring the performance of two different air conditioning units and I want to find out if one air conditioning unit performs better than the other in the sense that one requires less energy to cool a specified space. And so what I do is I measure the amount of energy required by each unit on each day. Since the temperature changes each day, I want to compare the energy used by unit A and the energy used by unit B. And I want to do this so that uh, each day with unit A is compared to the corresponding day on unit B. So we'll create a hypothesis test on the mean difference between two populations. And I'll call this mean difference delta zero. And the hypotheses that I'll set up, H zero, delta zero is equal to zero. H one, delta zero is not equal to zero. So in the context of this example, H zero means that unit one and unit B perform reasonably comparably in the sense that they both require about the same energy whereas H1 the alternative hypothesis would be that one unit is significantly better than the other. This is going to be a two-sided test because I'm not going to guess a priori which unit will be better than the other. So let's denote as Xi the energy used by unit A on day I and Yi the energy used by unit B on day I. And we'll define then DI to be XI minus YI. So this is the difference between the energies used on day I. In order to perform the test, we'll need to compute D bar, which will be the sample mean of my collection of DIs, and SD which is the sample standard deviation of my DIs. And once I've computed these, I'll create a test statistic T0. This is going to be D bar minus delta zero under hypothesis zero. And this delta zero is zero over SD divided by the square root of N. For the test we have, this is going to just be zero because we want to determine whether the difference between performances is zero or not. So T0 under hypothesis zero has a student's T distribution and we can actually use Excel or your favorite Excel equivalent to compute probabilities associated with it. So let's go to, in this case, my favorite Excel equivalent right now Okay, so I have 11 days worth of data. My n is equal to 11. And the energy used by unit A is given in this column. These are the values. And the energy used by unit B is given in this column, where all of the units for this problem are in kilowatt hours. So the first thing I need to do is compute the di's for each uh, day. And this is going to be the energy used by unit A minus the energy used by unit B. And I'll just bring that down for everybody. Now I need to have, in order to compute my test statistic, I need a D bar. And D bar is just the sample mean, which I get by using the average function of my di's and I need an SD. SD is just the sample standard deviation of my di's 
and from these values I can compute my test statistic t0. t0 will be equal to my sample average minus 0 divided by my sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And that gives us t0. There's now two ways we can approach this problem. One is to compute a p-value for this value of t0 and use that to make a decision. The other approach would be to choose a confidence level and from the confidence level find a critical region and decide then if T0 falls in the critical region. We'll do both. The first thing we'll do is we'll compute a p-value. To find the p-value we use the t-dist function. And the number here is going to be the absolute value of our test statistic T0. The reason for that is the t-dist function expects a positive number and we can just put the absolute value in because our sampling distribution for T0 is symmetric. The degrees of freedom is going to be the number of samples we have minus 1. And the mode is going to be 2 to indicate that we're doing a two-sided test. If we were doing a one-sided test, that would be 1. Another way we could set up this test is to choose a confidence level, say an alpha, of 0 0.05 and then we could compute a t sub alpha over 2 because this is a two-sided test and minus 1 and we can do that using the t inverse and the number here is alpha and the degrees of freedom are n minus 1 this value gives us the critical region. We will reject H0 if T0 is greater than 2.228 or if T0 is less than negative 2.228. And you can see that T0 falls between negative 2.228 and 2.228. So in this case, with a confidence level of 0.5, we do not reject hypothesis 0. We decide that the two units are working more or less the same. At this point, you should be able to set up a paired t-test.